Hello everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Leadership Speak series of L Forum. Today I have the pleasure of inviting a seasoned entrepreneur who has run his own organization successfully and seen many cycles and look forward to his insights on leadership, entrepreneurial leadership, challenges and learnings. So without further ado, let me welcome the guest for this show, Dominic Preza. Hi, Dominic. Welcome to the show. Hi, Dr. Ringo. Thank you very much for having me on. Appreciate it. My pleasure, sir. It's a pleasure meeting with you again. And uh, for the uh, for the audience uh, watching this, I'd love to hear your background and how you ended up being an entrepreneur. Give you give us the journey as to how uh, you progress from where you were to where you are today. Well, I started off on Wall Street. Uh, I started off uh, on Wall Street as a money manager. And uh, from that, I was uh, ran three international banks, uh, treasury operations and uh, hedge funds for them. Uh, what I saw in the late 90s was a transition that was taking place, uh, which is automation. So my very first venture uh, with a number of other professionals uh, together, uh, putting our monies together and uh, our experience together was to start a company uh, called Cognitech, to which we uh, took that uh, as over the internet and we're automating. Uh, well, basically, it was the first, it was one of the first fintechs that existed. Um, timing, it's part of the entrepreneurial, as I would say, you're either lucky or you're unlucky. So on this particular one, I was unlucky because although we started at the, uh, the end of 1998, uh, we were in it for a longer haul past 2003, and we got caught up in the dot-com boom bust in 2001. Uh, was the idea correct? Yes. Uh, everything today is transaction turnover, and that's what the model was. It was to automate uh, trading, and payments uh, over the internet. So that's the very first model that uh, I had uh, ventured into. And it's one in which uh, as, a, uh, as, a, as an entrepreneur, you, you're going out after those clients first B2B, and then we knew B2C would be the next move from that. Uh, if I, once the company, once things happened with the dot-com blow up uh, and with Cognitech had uh, wound down, uh, I basically didn't do anything for a couple of years. So I was on the side trying to figure out my next career move. And then um, I started uh, because of my technology background at that stage, getting technology background to a large extent, uh, ventured into uh, opening up my company, DG Business Solutions with my partner, Ganesh Van Kotterman. And we put together a solution for Sprint. Uh, then that, that morphed into uh, an SAP, uh, uh, SAP uh, projects that we were doing for uh, integrators, big integrators, the, uh, the Infosys, the, uh, the HCLs and others. And we, we were basically the backbone of what they were putting in and we were putting together solutions with them. And as a result of that, we were getting the staffing aspect out of that. But um, not a lot of that changed, right? Uh, after uh, the, the fallout in the financial markets in 2008-9. So uh, things change, you had to have full-time employees on, the model changed to a large degree. We were already moving into infrastructure and then from there we started moving into IT managed services to which we did very well in that. And then we had, uh, we had an approach uh, that we had gotten from uh, a huge client of ours uh, to go into 5G and to actually deploy it in field. So we did that. We did a proof, proof of concept that, uh, in uh, 2018 and then started to proceed to uh, roll out for one of the big major uh, mobile network operators, a uh, basically deployment in field. So that took a lot of uh, infrastructure from our standpoint. Everything was wonderful until COVID. So again, what I'm bringing out is that as an entrepreneur, okay, what are you coming up against? You're coming up against constantly waves, as I would call it. There are up and downs. There are, there are up and downs in, in all businesses, of course, but when you are a business owner, 
uh, those those waves can be they can be pretty sizable at times. So you would you have to ride them. So what's the underlying uh, the underlying force that drives me and keeps me going is that uh, it's being a relentless pursuer. If you're an entrepreneur and you want it to work, it's like you don't give up. You you have to continue to pursue. You also must continue to change with the technologies that are out there. And also, I firmly believe from my days on Wall Street that you maintain um, your contacts. And to me, the biggest thing is trust and respect. It's something that's lost in today's market a lot more because I, I noticed that the trust as well as the respect is not there like it used to be. Uh, and that also hurts uh, an entrepreneur because if you have a good idea, I've noticed even some ideas that you would share with some of the bigger corporations that you're trying to get in and work on a, as, as, your, as your prospective clients, sometimes they take those ideas and you don't get anything out of that. And it's, 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 you, you have to be careful because the respect that used to be in the marketplace before and the integrity is shortcoming right now in this marketplace. And I think things change. So, you know, it's, it's like history. It'll revolve itself back to a, a point where it's necessary to have integrity, respect, and, and uh, certainly to, uh, to, to listen to your client and, and to have them, okay, listen to you and respect you, okay, and not use it against you. So that's, uh, that gives you an answer as to exactly where I am and what my future was, my, what my past was and where I am today. Excellent, Dominic. That was that was a nice. Uh, I think uh, you gave us a pretty um, detailed perspective of your journey from the '90s to now, and you've seen quite a few big waves, as you rightly said, which uh, has been impactful on many, many, and touched almost all our lives. Uh, I think with that, my next question would be: uh, How has this impacted your leadership style or your take on leadership from the time you started to now? What have been your biggest learnings as a leader? Well, I, I always had patience. So patience was always there. Uh, with that. But uh, one of the things is that uh, I learned is that you really have to be very quick. So if you are procrastinating on doing something that you have an idea on, or you feel that this is the, the, the way you should go, um, I have found that taking it on yourself and reinventing it from the ground up, um, well, your chances are less by doing it that way. I really found that uh, strength that we used to call back in the day on Wall Street brokering, but today it, they use the terminology channel partners, okay, is a very good way, okay, in which you can get your idea and exactly what you want to do into the marketplace and with the help of others, because we, not, not everyone is an Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Let's, let's be honest. So if you don't have uh, the next, the next uh, Tesla out there, then you're working, I'm gonna give this example, then you're working like a Fisker, okay? Or a Lucid who is producing uh, an electric vehicle, right? But you're just trying to improve on the model that's already out there, that's being put out by somebody else. And I believe for most entrepreneurs, that's exactly what it is. And I think the way to get to the next level, what I've learned is that by keeping your relationships and having more channel partners and sharing that, again, it comes down to also, like I said, it's integrity and trust. And you have to have that because you don't want the ideas to go array and go out. And in other words, be stolen from you, right? But uh, that's what I've learned. Excellent, excellent. So, you know, when you marry these two concepts of entrepreneurship and leadership, I believe you come up with, I, this is my take that there's this new concept called entrepreneurial leadership. What's your take on that? And what do you believe entrepreneurial leadership to be? Okay, so certainly I believe that an entrepreneur to be an entrepreneur and to have that leadership, 
it's it involves a number of things and i believe that uh it's like i like i said it's it's trying to be ahead of the wave because we're going to go through the waves and the thing is that as a, when you're an entrepreneur and you're in a smaller company those waves are pretty big so they're like tsunamis at times so how do you ride that how do you how do, how are you how do you show the leadership within the people that you have in your organization and also to your peers and also to your um, your clients and the prospects. That to me is the leadership. It's like sh- it's like helping them and showing them. It's almost like you're uh, being a teacher to a certain extent. And and I and I do really feel that even for yourself, like what you're doing is correct. It's like you've educated yourself to such a degree, and I believe that breeds it to itself because it comes off that way when you're speaking with people. Now, my experience is coming, my, um, my knowledge and my entrepreneurial leadership is coming from experience, right? Or as we would say, wisdom. So the wisdom over the years has, has helped me to be a better leader with my own present organization and with my clients. So that is, that to me, okay, is who I am. And most clients, as a result of it, I know the people that know me, and a few of them had said it on their own. They they call me the trusted advisor. Now that's something that's earned, and I respect that, and I really take pride in that because that's what I believe I am—a trusted advisor. At the end of the day, and that is leadership, and something that you mentor to your own people because that's something that's not taught uh, to the younger generations as they're coming up. They have to again, gain that wisdom or they have to have that insight. And so you mentor that into your people become to them, for them to become leaders as well, because that's what you need. You need leaders within your organization in order for your company to grow. Great. So, uh, and you did uh, kind of allude to some of this during the earlier part of our conversation, Dominic. What have been your challenges as a leader and as an entrepreneur? What have been your biggest challenges? Well, some of my biggest challenges, it, well, we mentioned some of it already. It, it's, riding, it's riding these waves. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And you have to be persistent. You have to continually not give up on a client. I believe that you, can, you have to continue to, uh, to talk with them and keep them, uh, as I would say, warm. Um, and I think also to me, uh, what a lot that happens in the marketplace right now, you have to be on top of the cutting edge of technology. I like to do a lot of research on my own. And then when I'm talking to, whether it be a prospective client or a client that I have, try to mentor that act, aspect I, of what I'm learning and see if I'm right or wrong too, because they may come back and say, no, I don't see it that way. Or, oh, and damn, I never looked at it that way. That's interesting. Uh, you're right. And so to me, uh, the next, you know, to be, to move yourself forward in, as an entrepreneur, okay, and to be successful, it takes a lot of, uh, of perseverance. And uh, I, can't, I can't express that enough. I am a relentless pursuer. That's what I am. So I'm, whether it be at the, on my jo- job and working, okay, in, in my business and driving my business forward, or whether it be in the pleasure that I have as a, an avid cyclist, which I am. I'm a competitive <laughs> avid, avid cyclist. So I'm gonna be on, I mean, I'm out there and the guys that I ride with, a lot of them are almost half my age uh, in the group that I'm with. And that to me is really self-fulfilling too, right? I mean. Think of yourself like when you achieve something and you know you've achieved something as a company and as an entrepreneur and you've got your clients looking at you and they're giving you and, and, and they're taking you serious, right? And, and, they're, and you get business out of it. It's the same thing too for me on, a, on, the, uh, on the during the week uh, club rides and on the weekend, uh, you know, uh, as we call it, the quasi race rides um, that you're challenging. I'm challenging myself consistently, whether it be at work or whether it be at play. And that to me is what makes me at the end of the day. That's an interesting insight, uh, Dominic, that how you're using cycling as a motivation and or a parallel life to 
you know, run your entrepreneurial journey as well. That's, that's very insightful. And I think many entrepreneurs have shared similar such passions where they pursue something uh, to kind of draw energy from both to pursue yeah. the larger purpose of life or the purpose of their organization. I, I truly believe that that's what keeps you going. Okay? Absolutely. Because you, you may not always have satisfaction in one thing or the other, but certainly that passion was a, uh, there's a word for it in, in cycling, uh, panache. Okay. okay. Park. Lovely. So, you know, the last question from me today is, uh, what would your advice be to young leaders, entrepreneurs, and not only young, I mean, leaders and entrepreneurs as such, you know, based on your experience and wisdom you have gained over the years. Again, it goes back to the same things that I have always lived by, and that is to be relentless pursuing, never give up. Um, you be a person of integrity, uh, understand uh, what you're doing and, and, and the field in the market that you're in and expand upon that area as well. Um, and gain respect because I don't, I certainly believe that if you're a respectful person at the end of the day, whether that you've successfully completed, a, uh, got an opportunity and, and got the client versus the competition, the respect that you have given, okay, it, it, people I feel deep down know that, that you're a good person, that you, and as a result of it, your organization is good because you are that good person. Because if you're the leader of that, per, of that organization, then certainly those people, okay, you're mentoring those people to be like that. I, that's the way we are uh, in my company. I, I certainly like to mentor individuals. Uh, it's uh, call it teaching, call it mentoring, uh, call it giving out my wisdom. I do it, my, I do it with my kids. Uh, I do it with my friends and, uh, and I've learned from others. And right now uh, too, uh, I'll be honest, there's, there, there are others in the marketplace that, that I take uh, that wisdom from. Uh, I guess because, too, I was mentored by an old, uh, at the time, the real Morgan Guarantee banker, this gentleman was, and he was, his name was Jim Stewart, not the actor, but um, he was very, he was very powerful man, and he mentored me, and I never forgot that, and he said, your word is your bond at the end of the day, no matter what, so Yes, today there are more contracts, and yes, today uh, you know, they, the I's have to be dotted, the T's have to be crossed. But at the end of the day, if I look at somebody and I tell them I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And if I can't do it, I am not going to tell them that I can do it. Beautifully said, Dominic. I think uh, you could write as many contracts as you want, but if you can't uh, build a trust with your relationship, it it you know, really defeats the purpose, uh, especially as an entrepreneur, I can sense that. So thank you so much for your time, Dominic. It was a pleasure speaking with you as always. And uh, I look forward to your participation in our L Forum group. As I said, this is a group for the entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial leaders like yourselves. And I would probably, you know, be calling upon you many more times to participate in some of my other plans. So thank you for your time today. Wish you all the very best and uh, let's stay in touch. Thank you very much. I love to thank you for the opportunity. And I do agree that this is a good forum and a much needed one uh, these days. Um, and I think that uh, today it's, it's somewhat lost. We tend to fly off in our own directions, but I think that entrepreneurs need to spend more time together and to work with themselves, not against themselves, but in groups uh, that can formulate business between themselves. Thank you, Dominic. All the best and uh, let's stay Thank in you. touch. Same to you, Ringo. Take stay care. Well. Bye. Bye.